Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, hearing God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. We're gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy New Year. 2020 is gone. Pandemic's over. No, it will be soon. Get your shots. Um, it's really bad. But as we celebrate today the memorial for St. Gregory and St. Basil, we will be doing the fourth Eucharistic prayer, which is attributed to St. Basil. And I, I think maybe Gregory may have helped. I'm not sure. But I know it's a tribute to St. Basil, and we don't use it very often, so I'll have to preach shorter since it's a little bit longer, and you can experience one of the Eucharistic prayers we almost never use, because you have to use the preface with the Eucharistic prayer. But as we come together on this feast, we realize as God calls us to holiness, we're human and we fail. So we ask forgiveness for all of our failures, for all of our sins, so that we can enter the celebration and begin this year free of our sins with open hearts and open minds. Lord Jesus, you are a light to the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to give light to your church by the example and teaching of the bishops, St. Basil and Gregory. Grant, we pray, that in humility we may learn your truth and practice it faithfully in charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. St. John. Beloved, who is the liar? Whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Whoever denies the Father and the Son, this is the Antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son does not have the Father, but whoever confesses the Son has the Father as well. Let what you heard from the beginning remain in you. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made us, eternal life. I write you these things about those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you received from him remains in you, so that you do not need anyone to teach you. But his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and not false. Just as it taught you, remain in him. And now, children, remain in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be put to shame by him at his coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the, All the ends, ends of the, of the earth, earth have seen, seen the saving, saving power of God. of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends, ends of, of the, the earth, earth have, have seen, seen the, the saving, saving power, power of God. God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth 
have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. In times past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, and in the last days, he has spoken to us through his Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there's one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to untie, This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. So Happy New Year. I don't really think that making New Year's resolutions is something that benefits us because to pick one time because the church already gives us Advent. So we already have our list of things to get ready there. We have Lent coming up. But I think a new year is a chance to reset and to restart. And as we celebrate this new time, as we come together on a Saturday, so I realize I'm speaking to those people that this is really important for, I think as we get out of 2020, a lot of people are looking for hope. And I think when we find ourselves looking for hope, we find ourselves in the position of where everybody was when Jesus came. We're called to point to that hope. We are called and sometimes to be that hope. As John was to make straight the way of the Lord, that is our mission too. But we have that gift to actually make God present in our world. And that is our challenge. For our world to have hope, we have to have hope. And hope goes beyond pandemics. Hope goes beyond elections. Hope goes beyond the all the things that can bring us down, because the one thing that we have that is beyond all these things is our faith. I love at the committal rites, which I didn't do a whole lot until the pandemic came, because deacons can do that, where it, said, where it reminds us in Philippians that our citizenship is not of this world, it is of the next. And if we can remember that we belong to the kingdom of God, and that's what we're called back to, then we can live in hope. Then we can realize all the gifts that we've been giving And maybe as we start this new year, we recommit ourselves to that citizenship, to that life, as we work at truly being who God's called us to be, a light. As he came as a light to the nations, he has now left us to be his light to the nations.
Let us approach the throne of the Father and offer our needs. For all bishops and priests, may the peace and love of Jesus be theirs in a special way this Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all non-believers, may the Holy Spirit soften their hearts and kindle a fire of love for the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering loneliness or personal difficulties, may the Lord hold them close and bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people in our faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may Christ dwelling within us increase our joy this Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died from COVID-19, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, we thank you for your goodness as you hear our needs that we need to express that you already know. Help us to be able to hear your response and to know your presence in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory in honor of Saints Basil and Gregory a means to our eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your lights. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy. 
For you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his, to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creation. And when, through disobedience, he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we may live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, may that same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings as they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, Excuse me. As we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body in the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Mike's auxiliary, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those that take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and in all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole creation, freed at last from the corruption of sin and death, 
we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. And since we can't really do that in this space, let us pray for peace for all of God's creation. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Of the prayer that's here for the purification of the vessels. It says, What has passed our lips is food, O Lord. May we possess in purity of heart. And what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. I think it's a shame that's just for the priest or the deacon who's doing the vessel, who's doing the purification. So I shared it. Let us pray. 
May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high, that all who celebrate the feast day of St. Basil and St. Gregory, that they may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So that was the fourth Eucharistic prayer. A lot, you don't hear that very often because it's a little bit long. And I, you have to read it slowly because we don't do it very often to make sure your tongue doesn't get all tied. So also, please consider Catholic education for your kids. As we're going back to school next week, please give it a good look. If you need any help with that, the Catholic school's office here at the Archdiocese will be more than happy to help you. Or just ask your local parish priest and they'll do that. If you're a grandparent, maybe that could be a gift that you give to your youth. But don't let money stop them. We have plenty of resources. Not plenty. But we will find, for somebody that truly wants a Catholic education, we will find, do our best to make that work. And to our sponsors that make this possible, thank you. And again, thank Catholic Life. We have one month left in this raffle, and it's doing really well, and that's going to be our main fundraiser. So to Catholic Life, for the raffle tickets you've given to us and are sponsoring all the prizes, thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives.